Another extremely quiet day for Tesla stock, up a piddly 3.71%. Current market cap now $822 billion. Now, I may have a short memory, but I'm pretty confident it wasn't that long ago that Tesla stock had a market cap in the $300 billion range. Was it here? Here? Ah, oh, fuck it, who cares? Whatever. In the last five days, Tesla stock has surged about 20%. And the last one month, now up 51%. Year to date, finally green. Past 12 months, not quite. Now, obviously there were some extremely intelligent crystal ball owning timing lords who called this ahead of time, right? Told everybody, hey guys, I know what the future's going to be. I sold my Tesla here and here and here and I'm buying it back at the absolute bottom at 130, 140 or so dollars per share so I can benefit from this 85% run up since late April. I think for some strange reason all these timing lords have deleted any evidence of they're predicting this occurring. But I'm sure that there was a lot of smart people that knew this was going to come. Does anyone know what we're looking at on screen now? Let me just read this post from some guy with three first names next to a chart, which we'll have a look at closer in a moment. Over this period, which is from late 2021 until this was posted in April 2024. Over this period, I have added about as many Tesla shares as the GK ETF, Gerba Kawasaki, shout out to Ross. About as many shares of Tesla as the GK ETF has sold from its peak of around 8,000 shares of Tesla stock to around 1,000 shares. Now, of course, I am just a dumb YouTuber with a bad haircut who doesn't wear a suit and will deeply regret this decision in 5, 10, 15, and 20 plus years, and it turns out also in a few months. Robotaxi, Taxi. My brain is too small to understand what a terrible mistake I have made. Plus, I'm a deluded Tesla fanboy who can't think clearly. This reckless behavior is exactly why you need someone smart in a suit to manage your money for you. Quick, someone who manages money, explain this and plug your money management service and or ETF. It's a perfect layup. For extra points, compare how much better off people would be over this short period of a few years by not owning Tesla or owning less Tesla. The numbers won't lie. Okay, I've enough trolling. Why am I looking at this? Let's have a closer look here. Was there a point to this obnoxious post? There sure fucking was. By the way, ARK Invest scale on the right, everyone else, including myself on the left. We see ARK, who actively trade, dumping loads of Tesla stock near the peak. At the same time, the GK ETF was loading up, so to Future Fund. And then things fluctuating, but a bit of a trend. Future Fund selling most of its Tesla position from early 2023 till 2024. The GK Fund in orange here, selling close to its entire position in Tesla stock over the same time frame. ARK beginning to load up. And just scrolling up here... The guy with three first names appears to have just continued to add to his position over this time frame. Hmm. 7th of April, 2024. Now, oh, roughly here. Tesla stock up 50% since. So while all bar ARK Invest were massively reducing their position in Tesla stock to almost zero, I just kept buying when I had money. And here we are. The reason I mention this, folks, is to once again emphasize the difference between being a long-term investor and a short-term trader slash gambler. I have never sold a share of Tesla stock. I've been buying it now for almost a decade. No sales. If I was a genius, a timing lord, in theory, I could have sold and rebought at half the price many times over and made a lot of money. But I know my brain's not big enough to do that. So I don't try. I just look 10 years plus into the future and think, hmm, is it good value today? It is. Buy. One of the downsides of actively trading a company you strongly believe in over the long term is you may have sold your entire position or the majority of it at around $170, $175 per share, and then three months later, missed out on a 50% run. Check this out on CNBS. Never bet against Elon Musk. Tesla, techno king, warns short sellers will be, quote, obliterated. This is likely. Just between you and I, I kind of think that that's their fetish. Obliterate me harder, daddy. I, I, I mean, what, what other explanation could there possibly be for betting against Tesla stock? Unless you want to get your financial anus ruined. So is this Tesla rally merely a short squeeze or is something else driving the surge? Let's take it to our lead off panel with us tonight. Deepwater Asset Management Managing Partner Gene Munster and Gerber Kawasaki President and CEO Ross Gerber. Thank you both for joining Last Call. Gene, let me kick it off with you. What do you think is behind this surge in the stocks? Well, I think that there's two pieces. The first is what we saw with the delivery numbers. They were down 5 percent uh, for the June quarter. That's an improvement from down 9%, but I think investors are starting to fill in the blanks that uh, deliveries will be up 8% in September, another 8% in 
in December, double digits in calendar 25 and probably 20% in calendar 26. So I think we essentially, the first piece to this rally is uh, related to just investors understanding that we're going to see accelerating growth rates. And then you layer on this opportunity that Elon's been talking a lot about with AI and you outline some of those. There's another piece that was not mentioned, which is just the fleet opportunity in AI. But you start piecing together, investors can understand that this the profitability profile of this company can be much more attractive in the next few years as they roll that out. But Gene, if you're looking at Tesla's market share here, what we're seeing April through June is that the- So just jumping in here, Gene Munster just started talking about the inevitability of autonomy, robo-taxi, the fleet implications here are insane profits, huge revenue growth, printing billions of dollars without even acknowledging that point. They're talking head here on CNBS, likely with the producer in her ear, hey, say something funny begins to dish up this steaming pile of excrement. Tesla's US EV market share. Look, it's only 49.7% in 2024 versus 59.3% in 2023. This must mean it's the end of the world. The myopic focus on their auto business ignoring the potential of autonomy is one thing. The other thing that's important is how fucking brain dead and irrelevant this is. The entire electric vehicle market is growing. Roughly 10% of all new vehicles sold last year, it's going to be about 100% in the future. That's a 10 times increase in the entire pie. Furthermore, every time a new company starts producing and selling some electric vehicles, they're eating out a tiny slice of this pie. It is inevitable over time that Tesla's, quote, US market share is going to decline in absolute terms. This number will get smaller over time. It is not going to stay at 49.7% indefinitely. This is inevitable. But this has nothing to do with a positive or negative future for Tesla. It's an inevitable outcome of other companies also producing electric vehicles and the entire market transitioning. Case in point, if Tesla were the only company on earth, or in this case in the United States producing electric vehicles, which was kind of the case not that long ago, a few years ago, their share would be literally 100%. Then, an electric vehicle startup produces one vehicle, sells one electric vehicle in the United States. Suddenly, Tesla's market share collapses from 100% to 99.99%. Do you understand? This is a gigantic nothing book. It tells us nothing. If you have a, let's just be honest here, below average size brain, you might look at this and go, oh my God, look, it's collapsing. Help. But you've got to think about the bigger picture. The whole pie is growing. It's got a 10X or more. And inevitably during this process, Tesla is not going to, can you imagine this? Imagine Tesla maintained roughly this market share. It wasn't just US, but it was globally. And the entire planet had transitioned to EV. So it's 100% of all new vehicles sold. You know how many fucking vehicles per year? This would be about 50 million vehicles a year. Does anyone think this is realistic? Of course not. I mean, it could happen, but bro, wouldn't be betting on it. This is a disingenuous way of painting what appears to be a negative picture about Tesla. It's just like a cool story, bro. It doesn't tell us anything. No doubt, Gene is likely to bring the focus back to the big picture. The market share dropped below 50% for the first time. There you're seeing the share, the market share standing at 49.7%, um, according to Cox Automotive where last year it had almost 60% market share in the same time frame, what gives? Well, the market share, in my opinion, is uh, less important. What's important is the growth rates. And ultimately, their market share started at close to 90 100%, and the expectation over time was it was going to drift lower. There we go. Gene said exactly what I did. I mean, this is a no-shit Sherlock moment. Look, hello, do you not understand how numbers work? The, higher, the highest uh, traditional car company has about a 15% market share in the U.S. I think ultimately Tesla can have a 20, 25% market share. So I've expected that number to be drifting down, and I'm more focused on what the growth rates are. And as I mentioned, they should be accelerating in the months and quarters and years to come. Ross, you've come out previously, and we've talked a little bit about your frustration about the board of directors not maintaining more control over the company and having more oversight. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the options available in other EVs. What do you think is behind the surge behind Tesla's share price? Obviously, it's because Elon has finally stopped sharing his opinions about things that matter. I think that was a core piece of Ross's narrative previously of why Tesla stock was getting crushed, right? Elon bad, Elon opinions, Elon distracted, Elon X, Elon orange man bad, etc., etc. Elon, no problem at the border. What are you talking about? Elon, secure elections. What are you talking about? Shut up, Elon. Stop having opinions. And just explaining for those who don't understand and aren't paying attention, Elon has been as vocal as ever on X about all these topics and more. So nothing has changed in terms of Elon, his sharing of opinions. The topics that those opinions happen to focus on. It's got nothing to do with what Musk has been doing. Nothing. 
no behavior has changed. So looking forward to hearing why Elon bad is no longer the case. Well, there's two things. First, I, I want to address the, the idea that Tesla is going to sell a lot more cars over the next two years without using levers like advertising and not having any really new vehicles or a refreshed Model Y. So I would push back from first say all the analysts have been wrong with Tesla's numbers over the last three years, and they've been substantially lower than what analysts and even what Tesla expected. And I just don't see why sales would accelerate greatly with the current strategy. Now, irrelevant of that, I think the surge, a lot of that has to do is I think the worst case scenario where Elon Musk would leave the company because his pay package wasn't approved, you know, that kind of got taken off the table. So that that was like a positive thing. Um, the delivery numbers were obviously down year over year. So celebrating that, I, I'm still sort of like, OK, it wasn't as bad as expected. But at the same respect, they were giving away cars for a whole month with ridiculously low financing deals where Tesla lost money on those cars. So what I think the real thing is a lot of people are short Tesla and they just get caught. And I don't understand why short sellers are so stupid. You know, you just don't short <laughs> Tesla. Like it, how many times have they lost? You know, I mean, just because I'm unhappy with Tesla and I might sell a little bit of my stock has nothing to do. With now, I am going to presume that Ross, when he talks about selling Tesla stock, is referring to the GK ETF. That is the reason he's appearing in the media is to plug the GK ETF, not his personal holdings. If, he, if it has any, I don't know. This is what, in orange, selling some of your shares, a few of your shares, I can't remember exactly what he said, looks like. Peak here of over 8,000 shares of Tesla stock. At the end of this chart, just under 1,000. And let's just check today. A whopping 816 shares of Tesla stock, less than 1% of the fund. In other words, over the last couple of years, the GK ETF appears to have sold roughly 90% of its Tesla stock. Just thought that context could be useful. You were going short one of the most innovative, important companies of our time. So... You know, I just want Tesla to get its act together, but by far, there's so much more that Tesla can do in the future if they really just focus. So, so you know, it's hard not to be a bull long term on Tesla, even though at the current moment it's a little bit confusing. I'm just speaking of confusing. If you find it hard to not be a long term bull on Tesla, why would you have dumped almost your entire position in the ETF you manage? Any ideas? By the way, I definitely agree with Ross shorting Tesla stock. There's no greater example of brain damage. Even if you think you're going to be right, you have to acknowledge you're playing with fire, likely to get completely burned. And unless you're into pain and humiliation, why would you not just sit it out? History has shown that those betting against Tesla stock on average have either lost so much money they've had to move back in with their mother or lost all the money they'd saved up while still living in their mother's basement because they never moved out of home. In every scenario, short Tesla stock and you're inevitably going to end up either living in your mother's basement or still living in your mother's basement. I was going to say, you can see the headline on X as soon as we get done. Here's going to be Elon Musk's own platform, and the headline is going to say, why are Tesla short sellers so stupid? Uh, <laughs> Gene, when you're looking at what's coming down the pike, I mean, you had Elon Musk talking about Optimus, and once the robots get busy, they're just going to t apparently take over the company. But what about RoboTaxi in the near term? It's like everybody's holding their breath over this big reveal. Yeah, definitely. So... The expectations are most people are expecting two vehicles. I'm expecting three vehicles. I think two of those will be related to something robo-taxi. And I think it probably is going to add some noise to 2025 because they're not going to be in, in production or much production in 25. But that's where you get some of that better acceleration in 26. And so think of this as just a, a building block piece. But uh, Ross is right. They haven't had really anything exciting on the car front. The Cybertruck was, has been a dud, and they need some... Um, did he just... He, I just... You know what? I just, I'm not even going to touch that one. Yes, Cybertruck's a dud. Bro, I'm biting my tongue here. The duddiest dud to ever dud. Something that uh, really reinvigorates growth, and I think we're going to see that on August 8th. And one final piece is this isn't rocket science. They're, uh, they're just building blocks. They're building it with new vehicle variants. Is, is, cyber, is the Cybertruck cannibalizing the other sales? They're not selling enough of them to cannibalize. I think we're, we're talking about thousands per quarter versus, uh, you know, they're 450,000. No, we're, ta we're talking about the Model S. You know, like what we're seeing is that, and, and by the way, the Cybertruck's not a dud. I drive it and I'm telling you every kid 
in this neighborhood is dying to get in this car. So it's a pretty popular it's vehicle. And it's out for me. Is, uh, I don't really, need no, no it's really more hard kids to in the make. car. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm more popular than Disneyland or Legoland right now. So, um, but that said, you know, it's a hard vehicle to produce. I've already dented mine and there's only one place in California to get it fixed. You know, it's like, you know, the vehicle wasn't really complete when they, when they did it, but a lot of the buyers are people who would otherwise buy a model S or X. They're Tesla owners who are yeah. buying yeah. the Cybertruck. It's not new people who haven't bought Teslas before. And that's, I think, the failure of the Cybertruck is not... Ex Here's a thought, by the way, a thought. If it's true that many purchasing a Tesla Cybertruck are existing Tesla owners, does that not possibly hint at the fact that Tesla makes excellent products and has loyal customers for life? As for the idea that people buying Cybertruck are only existing Tesla owners, I I think that's a bit of a stretch. Shout out to the many celebrities, athletes, rappers, and so on who've never owned a Tesla but need their Cybertruck and have been posting relentlessly on social media and finding excuses to pick up coffee on Saturday morning just to be seen in, around, and driving their Cybertruck. You have to also think about the second order effects of this thing. It's not just the vehicle and how many are they selling and how much revenue is that producing. The amount of attention that Cybertruck is bringing to Tesla as a brand, the number of seeds that it's planting that are currently germinating, that we won't see fully grow for years cannot be overstated now some quality trolling from dan ives in fact he seems to be rubbing salt into the wound and reposting his own post just to really drive the point home quote nice to see the former bear ross gerber changing teams and coming back to the bull tesla camp do the bulls welcome ross back or no and that was in reference to this clip with gene munster so Let's read some of the comments. Now, obviously, the X algorithm is likely to be serving these comments up based on my own connections. You probably will see a slightly different order, but I'm just curious to see what some of the comments say. After all, Dan asked the question. Ross historically appears to be extremely negative on Tesla when the stock is down and suddenly saying it's impossible not to be bullish over the long term when the stock is up. So Ross has the top comment here. You love painting me as a bear. Well, hey, I mean, it's better than painting him as a clown. I'm sorry, Dan, I've lost faith in Ross. He changed his Elon compensation package vote from yes to no when his firm made money. Ethically, it's not right. And character always comes before money. The answer is no. No, he's not welcome back because he is a liar. <laughs> I mean, okay, great, he's back. However, here's the thing. He flipped negative on Tesla because of what he perceived to be Elon Musk politics. Why would anyone trust his investment advice when he is so consumed by emotion? Hey, that's a good question. Not really who I would man want managing my money. We Tesla Bulls don't claim him. Let Tesla Q have him forever. Remember, he voted no on Elon's compensation package. He voted no. Not welcome back. He's a game show host master. <laughs> Asset manager. Shit, creative comment. Definitely not welcome back. Gerber is forever banished to the shadow realm. Careful now. On a red day, he might switch back. Good point. Him voting against Elon's pay package is disturbing. He'll never be welcome back after voting no on reinstating the compensation package. Tell you what, it's a good thing that Ross has thick skin. Otherwise, this feedback might get to him. Backstabber with no honor. Bull or bear doesn't matter. It's the character of the man. My grandbabies own more Tesla stock than Ross Gerber. Ross changes tune with the change of the stock price. Hmm, facts. He's way too unstable to want back as a bull. Who cares? A fire... <laughs> what the fuck? A fire hydrant could give better Tesla analysis. Quit giving him oxygen. He's already shown his true colors. He could do what he wants, but he will not be respected from either camp. I definitely do not respect him or his opinions. Dan, please call Ross out. I'd hire an intern before Ross. Somebody reposting Ross back in 2021, testing out an Akimoto vehicle called Story Bro. I think this is where we will wrap up. What's that saying? It takes a lifetime to build a reputation and a moment to ruin it. Of course, that's uh, totally irrelevant. I just thought I'd randomly share that at the end because why not? Now, just finally, when ARK Invest published their Tesla price target, 2029, five years, their fair valuation of $2,600 per share on the 12th of June, 2024, possibly the 11th, depending on the US and Australia date conversion here, Tesla stock, let's just call it $170.66 per share. In order to reach 2600 by 2029, Tesla stock would have needed to increase by about 15 times. Now, a mere 10 times. What a difference a single month can make. I'm going to say that again. We're already a third of the way there from a 15 times to a 10 times. The next step is a five times and then we're there. Now, before any autistic math nerds get too enraged in the comments, don't even say it. Just trying to emphasize how much has happened 
and how much opportunity has already been realized. Another way of stating this, if you own Tesla stock back here and it does get to $2,600 a share, you make 15 times your money. However, if you're buying it today and it gets to 2,600, you're making 10 times your money. Now, I'm not very good at math, but I think making 15 times is better than making 10 times. In fact, I think it's substantially better. For example, would you prefer to turn $1 million into 15 million or would you prefer to turn $1 million into 10 million? I mean, personally, I'd prefer the extra 5 million, but hey, that's just me. And just for fun, just finally, I wonder, what if we have another good month or two or three, another 50.95%. Now, just to be clear to the morons who, before you say it, I'm not predicting this is going to happen. I'm just saying, what if it did happen? This is not the first time we've seen Tesla stock surge more than 50% in around a month. I'm not kidding. It's happened many times in the company's history. A 50% surge takes us to roughly $400 a share. So another good month. Again, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if we did have another good month, like this one, straight on the back of it, and then another, nearly $600 a share. Another one of those, we're now nearly $900 a share. Shout out to Dylan Loomis for posting some recent examples of such surges. In 2021, this is just the last couple of years, by the way. 2021, Tesla did 127% in 68 days. That's roughly two of those 50%. 2023, 113% in 41 days. 2023, also 97% in 84 days. Case in point, these kind of surges on Tesla stock historically can occur. By the way, the same thing can happen in reverse. We've seen that too. So three good months, so to speak, on Tesla stock. Getting close to 900 bucks a share. What about another one? 1300 bucks a share. And again, just to be clear, we've seen three of these surges over a three-year period, roughly one a year. Now, again, not predicting. I'm just saying historically, here's some examples of what has happened. If we had five good months over the next five years, the 50% surge and assuming that it's the exact same price, just a hypothetical, we're nearly $2,000 a share. And that's assuming a 50% month. If instead of 50 or so percent, we're looking at 69% five times, suddenly we're at $3,616 per share. Again, not a prediction. Just an example of how quickly large multi-double-digit percentage surges in the value of a company can escalate and the power of owning a stock before a massive surge as opposed to selling and then chasing after it and having missed out on a 50% gain. Again, those who own Tesla around that 170 mark were looking at 15 times to get to 2,600. Those buying today, 260, about 10 times. That is a big difference. Want more content, early access, bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. There's plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. 
everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens. Now, AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend, seriously, try Athletic Greens, you won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they're asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game's improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference, no more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people, right? Wrong, just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even wanna risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst could happen? Try it for a month, see how you feel. It's a no brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.